Okay, this is the uh, Carlisle compressor. It's a compressor used in Carrier. I believe Carlisle is made by Carrier. Uh, this is two and a half, three ton. Can't remember which one it is just yet. Well, I guess it must be three because it says three horsepower on the uh, side of the motor. If you take a quick look there, you can see that three horsepower. We're going to take this thing apart and we're going to put it back together again. Okay, here's the pistons and connecting rods of the Carlisle. Uh, that's what the top of the piston looks like. Uh, one ring, one uh, just nut notch cut in there. You can see this actually has a fair amount of wear on it. This thing was in for about 20 years. Uh, actually, it's a little more wear than I'd expect on it. These things should not be wearing very much. But uh, what I wanted to show you mostly is earlier I had a video on a, uh, a GE and the connecting rod bearings didn't look so good. This is more like what the connecting rod bearing should look like. Uh, it's uh, not showing much wear. Uh, maybe just a little bit of wear. Uh, okay, I'm putting this uh, connecting rod onto this crankshaft now. And you can see, compared to that other one, this one's got very little clearance. See, that clearance is a lot better on this one. I'll also take a little closer look to, on those uh, bearings. Now you can see on those bearings, not near the score marks uh, as the, uh, the GE. And the main bearing here is also quite a bit better. Now you can see on that main bearing a little bit of scoring there so there has been some garbage going through this thing but not near like what the other one was. Now this crankcase here uh, you can see you've got a cylinder there and you've got a cylinder here. Now uh, there's a little bit of rust in there but that's from the cleanup. Uh, these are fairly clean. They're not perfect but they're fairly clean. This is an opposed two cylinder. I'm going to assemble this thing and we'll uh, see what it looks like when it's assembled. Okay, this is a view with the connecting rods in and you can see them rotating back and forth. And uh, here's your pistons moving up and down like that. Uh, Get a little closer here. Okay, this is one of the valve plates. Uh, the uh, that's the intake valve. It's on uh, there in the center. It's kind of concentric, similar to what the GE was. And what this does is when there's a vacuum in the cylinder, this thing just kind of pulls open a little bit like that. Now, if we reverse it. Okay, you can see the valve is kind of limited by this plate up here, but there's a little flapper valve in there, very similar to the uh, intake valve. Just a little flapper in there like that. Uh, and that's your discharge valve. Okay, this is a compressor assembled. And I'll point out a few things here. These are the intake lines. Now you notice they come up high. This, this is the way this sits. Uh, with this at the bottom of the can and these at the top. Both of these are the suction uh, uh, tubes. That means the oil level, which would normally be right around here someplace, will have to be up almost to the height of the top of the windings for this thing to uh, 
uh, flood either oil or refrigerant into it, and that's the idea behind those things. Okay, quick overview, uh, cylinder head, valve plate, head, valve plate, uh, crank, and connecting rods, motor, motor winding, and the uh, stay, uh, rotor inside. Now, we'll see if we can figure out what's wrong with this thing. 